chief operating officer here at Southern Sky, and I'm from Atlanta. That's pretty much where I grew up. My father was a Superior Court judge. Before that, he was a district attorney. He put people in jail for marijuana. Uh, we grew up Southern Baptist, um, very straightforward religious. Um, you don't smoke, eat, cuss, or chew, nor hang around them that do. Um, I mean, we, we, it was just a, we didn't have alcohol in the house. We weren't exposed to any of that. Um, and then the company that I was working for, uh, their, uh, the owner's son got neuroblastoma, which is an, uh, just an awful, awful brain cancer. And they treated it with Marinol, did not have good success with that. And there's more to that story, but it exposed me to it, um, to cannabis. And it's like, why are we using a synthetic was my question. It just didn't make sense. And I didn't think it would be as effective. And I just started doing a lot of research. Um, I've been known to, when I find something I'm interested in, I just do the deep dive and I do all the research on it. And I went to some trade shows. I met a doctor who just absolutely blew my mind. Um, he was convinced that there was incredibly good medicine. There's a point, in fact, look up 1936, the Marijuana Stamp Act. The Marijuana Stamp Act outlawed cannabis and the AMA, American Medical Association, fought against putting it as a Schedule One drug because they knew there was a lot of medicine in it. Um, so I started doing research, I started asking questions, and then I got involved. Well, I come from a food background. I had to build food grade facilities, a lot of chicken plants and uh, food storage. And if you do that, you have to understand the safety rules and the way to build a building for safe production of food. Uh, all the regulations. I started, uh, when the trade shows started getting into legal cannabis markets, started going to those and met some people in the in the black market that were getting legal grows started and they had no clue how to build to a food grade standard. And I was just at the very front of the, of the industry and met a lot of people and uh, started teaching them how to build the facility better so they could operate a better business. Uh, they didn't have to clean up. They didn't have the, the, the other issues that other growers have. Excuse me. <clears throat> That's the, what changed my mind the most was I met real people that needed it. And um, I was going to a lot of legal states uh, and I started helping people just, I, I never sold it. I just gave it away because they, these people I, were friends and uh, there were some cancer patients. There were some people with just unbelievable chronic back pain. Um, and then, you know, the other part of the story for me is that I was diagnosed with uh, a severe depression um, and PTSD. And um, I had some really good growers that helped me understand that cannabis could help me. Um, and I started using it uh, for those uh, for those issues. And it really did. It, it really helped calm me down and, and help me kind of get back to a good place. Um, I think that's always a process. And then I got really involved with some really good growers. Um, I mean, Ed Rosenthal and Swami and some of these guys that I've just met, um, uh, Ed Dow, Soul Therapeutics, Jared Dinsmore, Grass Monkey and Maine, they, they just became friends who helped me understand the medicine side of it and helped me understand the growing side of it so that I could more readily grow what the patients that I was helping needed. Um, and that was my whole focus. So I got in and saw, I didn't read stories, I met real people that I saw get tremendous relief. And I just became a true believer. Listen. Every, um, so I've been involved with, I, you know, I want to make sure I say this correctly, I've been involved with over 150 growth facilities around the nation. Um, some in a consulting role, but we, as a supplier, different stuff. Um, what I've seen is the, the innovation that's involved in this space will blow your mind. We're, we are, we're going, a lot of the technology that people are doing in cannabis uh, will wind up in the food chain where they're growing lettuce better, they're growing indoor crops, they're growing outdoor crops better. Uh, the science is really catching up and I think you're going to see a lot more innovation. Southern Sky specifically, the founders have just been just magical to work with. They get it, they understand it, they embrace it. Uh, we've been very blessed to have a city like Canton, Mississippi have the mayor embrace us. The aldermen all got on board. They understand that we are selling medicine. Um, and that they want to help their patients, and we applaud them. Um, 
I think the, the whole way the state got to where we are in the medical program, honestly, has been pretty fascinating. Uh, I, I think it's a, a real blessing. It's actually a good way to show that America democracy works. There's not another place in, in the world that you can see the states stand up to the big state, the federal state, and say, nah, we don't really give a crap what your law says. We're going to let our people use this. Um, it, it, everybody says, well, Canada did it. No, Canada did it from a federal level to all the states. The states didn't have a choice. They just wrote the law. Whereas here, it's the opposite's happening. So the, the Supreme Court overruled it, and uh, on the technicality, they were within their rights to do that, but then you saw the process work. The, the, uh, the legislatures heard the people, the people pushed back, and the governor saw it too and signed it. Pretty amazing. One of the things that in the industry, a lot of people talking about needing to get in, wanting to get in the industry, and we applaud that. We want more people in. We think it's, it elevates the game. One of the things is find good suppliers. Find people who have a history in this, that know what they're doing, and have done it before. And if you find those people, they will tell you all the other good suppliers. Urban Grow has been a delight to work with. I cannot speak highly enough of them. Uh, Sam Andres, uh, we've been working together on a lot of projects, and he knows his stuff. Um, and he will just save people just incredible money if they'll listen to him and build their facilities right so they don't have botrytis or powdery mildew or uh, spider mites or thrips that get in because they'll design the facility like a food grade facility. Hopefully the federal regulations will require that. It's the hope anyway. Yeah, um, I think the, the biggest tips that I would say having been in the industry for so long is, you know, ask around. If, look, um, there are people in this industry, it's, it's kind of like the microbrew industry, that's what I've seen because we built a lot of microbrews. Um, every microbrewer of beer knows the other microbrewers in the area. They all share secrets and um, or trade uh, knowledge. And the same thing with cannabis. Cannabis use has always been a very um, a communal thing. There's a lot of sharing. Sharing a joint is just kind of part of the, the culture. Um, sharing knowledge is what happens. The, the old traditional black market growers, they're, most of them are really excited that it's finally getting legal and they want people to do it well. Um, so that part I would ask around for, hey, give me references and let me call them. A lot of times I've called, I've bought some, some grow racks and lights and I said to the supplier, I want to see it in action. And they said, we got a, a facility up here in, in Massachusetts, we'll call them, we'll set it up. We went up there and toured their facility. Um, ask around. People are, are great to, to collaborate in this industry. It's been wonderful in that respect. Love it. Honor the plant. Honor each other. Be kind. Do good. And and do do humans well. Um, this part of the ethos that's in the in the industry. Um, it's not a bunch of druggies. You know, it's not a bunch of stoned out. In fact, I'll even say this categorically. I've said this publicly. I've never had anybody disagree with me. I really believe that the stoner image kind of hurts us a little bit now because people view it as people being lazy and uh, dumb or whatever else. It, I have not found that to be true. I think that was great TV movies, um, but it's not It's not really, really true. And the reason I say that specifically is because I've been around some very motivated, really, really smart stoners. And I really believe the stoners, a lot of them have been treating medical conditions, but they didn't know how to articulate that I'm anxious. I just want to smoke a joint. Well, the reason you want to smoke a joint is because you're depressed or you're anxious or you've got PTSD or, or you have colitis or you have... IBS and they don't know that's what they need for medicine. I, I just think that's a lot of the stoner image that's been misrepresented. Rachel is a, a grower from Humboldt. I, I just have the utmost respect for her. Um, she's very knowledgeable. She gave away more weed than she ever sold, I think, to help patients. And I told her, I said, look, right now I don't know where we are in Mississippi, how the law is going to play out. I don't know any idea what the salary structure is going to be. And she's like, Steve, she told me this on the phone a year and a half ago. She said, Steve, look, I didn't get into this for the income. I got into it for the outcome. And I'm like, oh, Rachel, that's our tagline. But we're going to honor you because you're the one that, that told me that. And it came from her, but we have adopted it. We're in, we're in this for the, for the outcome for patients. And when you see a little kid who's having epilepsy and you see it in front of your eyes or you see someone with back pain, that's so excruciating they can't stand up and drink a cup of coffee and then they smoke a joint and they can stand up with their arms crossed and drink a cup of coffee. I mean, 
72 year old man that I saw that happen to, it was just like, how can anybody fight against that?